Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the live stream. Today we've got a really good one. Today we're looking at the 1950 classic propaganda film from the Cold War, which is called You Can Beat the A-Bomb. So by 1950, of course, most people had seen at least photographs, if not video, uh, you know, film of uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And so people were aware of what the power of atomic bombs was. And, and it scared them, right? One of the reasons that the Cold War was such a big deal and one of the reasons why most people really were involved in it and one of the reasons why the United States stayed involved with the rest of the world is that people were afraid of nuclear weapons. When they saw what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they said that could just as easily happen in New York or San Francisco or Dallas or Chicago. And so I expect my government to make me safe because we now know what atomic bombs are capable of. Then, of course, we get this tension that comes up at the end of World War II between the Soviet Union and the United States and then eventually becomes the two alliances of uh, NATO and the Warsaw Pact and of course there's antagonism there and the United States decides that we're going to try to stop the spread of communism and that they're going to be seen as this kind of antagonistic force towards us. Well people of course are still afraid. People are concerned about having a nuclear war against the Soviet Union and again the, one of the reasons why and I'm going to keep bringing this back because the video we're going to watch, the film that we're going to watch today, of course, uh, is an attempt to, to ease people's concerns. It's an attempt to get people to kind of relax and chill out and not constantly be worried about, oh my gosh, we're about to die in a nuclear war. Now, the thing that, of course, we, we need to keep in mind is this, right? This is a photograph of Hiroshima. The, this is the reality. This is what atomic bombs do. Do. And again, if you watch the last live stream, well, I'm sorry, two live streams ago when we looked at A Tale of Two Cities and what the actual consequences of the atomic bombings were for Hiroshima and Nagasaki, again, this looks very familiar. Absolute, total devastation. This is the reality and most people know it. And many people have seen, right, from, from film or from uh photographs or they've been told, you know, it's just complete and total destruction. The United States government then decided that one of the things that they really needed to do was they needed to, to, to settle people down. They needed to get people to relax. They needed to kind of calm the hysterical, you know, mindset of, oh my gosh, we could die at any moment in a nuclear war. And so to do that, the United States government started to employ uh, propaganda films some of these were cartoons, some of these were live action. The one that we're gonna see here is actually relatively uh, early on one, and the reason that it comes out in 1950, and the reason that the government really starts to pay attention to making people relax in 1950 is, in 1949, the Soviet Union develops the atomic bomb on, you know, they had spies that helped them along, but when the Soviet Union's got the bomb, when the Soviet Union has nuclear technology, what that means is, we now have a really big problem. And that really big problem is, of course, when both sides are armed with atomic bombs, well, what that means is both sides can be wiped out and this might very quickly become everybody's problem, not just even the military's problem or not just um, Europe's problem. This could really become a major, major issue. And this is what everybody's worried about. My hometown could become this. We could end up looking like Hiroshima. And so, of course, then the, the propaganda that comes out, you know, after that is very, you know, and, and we're going to watch some more of this next week. We're going to look at the kind of elementary school version of this particular uh, film. And what we're going to see is uh, for this particular uh film, what we're going to see is called You Can Beat the A-Bomb. So this is what the government's telling people. These are the strategies that they want you to employ. This is what they're trying to do to get you to relax and not worry so much about the bomb and to kind of go on, you know, as normal and, and not to, to panic. So without any more introduction, then we're going to dive right into it and we're going to check out 1950s You Can Beat the A-Bomb. Within this universe, there are many natural elements and forces at work. And in his search for truth and the betterment of his lot, man has uncovered gravity, the invisible anchor that keeps him safely bound to Earth. 
electromagnetic force, which he uses in industry, and atomic power, the explosion of an inconceivably tiny particle of matter, setting off similar explosions in other atoms, the energy of the atom. Scientists have long known... So one of the really interesting things to pay attention to here is that they're starting off and they're trying to make atomic power and, and you know, the use of, of nuclear uh, technology to be something that's very normal. Look what they're comparing it to, right? A man has discovered all kinds of great things in, throughout history. We've discovered gravity. We've discovered electromagnetism. Now we've discovered atomic energy. It's no different than those other things. And, and it really has, you know, a relatively good and normal place in your life. Stop panicking. Stop worrying about it. That's, again, that's the propaganda aspect of this is trying to control what people think so that they, they relax and they calm down and they stop stressing constantly about the idea that nuclear weapons exist and that they're about to be killed by one. So let's, let's continue. Of radiation, one of atomic energy's chief characteristics. Today, they can detect the amount of radioactivity present at a given time with many specialized instruments. One of these is the Geiger counter. See, where is that clicking? You must be radioactive. Really? Uh, wait a minute, don't worry. You see, your watch has radiation, but it comes from the paint on the numbers that make it glow in the dark. Well, what do you know about that? I've been carrying radioactivity around with me and didn't even know it. <laughs> For my students, this guy totally reminds me of Mr. Rice, but again, the kindly old... The, the kindly old janitor, right? He doesn't know any better. He's he's one of these people that the government's worried about is going to be afraid of nuclear weapons. And so, you know, once we realize, well, it's, you know, radiation is something that's everywhere. It's not something to worry about. It's in the paint on the numbers on your glow-in-the-dark watch. And, and But again, at the very beginning, right, the guy is like, oh, my gosh, you're carrying radioactivity around with you. The scientist is. And then eventually it's, oh, never mind. It's something normal, right? What, what we should have been worried about at the beginning. Now, we understand we don't have to be that worried about. It's really not that big a deal. Of indisputable aid to man's physical well-being have been the discoveries of medical science in the field of radiation. The most recent medical research in radiation has produced a whole battery of radioactive manufactured at Oak Ridge. So something to pay attention to here. Um, these guys are carrying a container around from Oak Ridge National Laboratory. So Oak Ridge National Laboratory was created during the Manhattan Project to develop the atomic bomb. It was the main site of the creation of most of our nuclear weapon, uh, nuclear material, the, the fuel for our nuclear arsenal. And uh, these guys then are carrying around uh, a container full of radioactive material. And it says right on the outside, right? Oak Ridge, danger, handle with care. They're not even wearing gloves. They're just they're just walking around with these things in their bare hands. Like again, it's the 1950s. We don't really fully appreciate or understand exactly what all of this atomic bomb technology is, but I just love the fact that the two guys are carrying that around with their with their bare hands. Like danger, be careful, no gloves. and sent to hospitals all over the country. Atomic weapons to save lives. And in the field of industry, advances in the use of radioactive substances are constantly benefiting man's search for newer and better methods of production. And we need every sheet of steel plated exactly the critical thickness. No more, no less. How can you get a measuring device sensitive enough to show a variation of one ten thousandth of an inch without stopping production? We can use radiation. How? Oh. You station a radioactive substance at this point in the production line and pass the steel over. Over the steel, you put a gauge to measure the amount of radiation coming through. Now, if the steel plate varies in thickness in one direction or another, the amount of radiation getting through to the gauge will vary, and that gauge will register the change. Looks as though you're beating it, Bob. So that's an interesting one, right? Because they're trying to show you like how this radioactivity and how this radiation can be really useful 
in industry, right? If we were trying to make something like steel plate and we want to make sure that it doesn't vary more than 10 thousandth of an inch, how can we do that and make sure that we're not stopping production all the time to go in there with a little caliper and try to measure how thick our steel plate is? Well, we can use radiation. If we send radiation you know, uh, through the steel and it changes in thickness at all, we'll be able to detect that variance in the amount of, a, of uh, radioactivity getting through the steel plate and ultimately it's going to be you know, really useful and it's going to make our, our production line very, very efficient. So again, at the beginning of this video, at the beginning of this film, they're trying desperately to make radioactivity and radiation and, and atomic technology into something which is very, very good and very, very positive so that ultimately the decision is going to be so you don't have to worry about it as much. So stop yelling at your government to protect you and, and relax a little bit. But what about the atom bomb? It has been stated that to speak of atomic energy in terms of the atomic bomb is the same as speaking of electricity in terms of the electric chair. It is true, however, that the energy which gives us the power to heat, the heat and light to make things move and grow, is the same energy released in the explosion of the A-bomb. To state and local governments, falls the responsibility for action and cooperation within the limits of their own jurisdiction. The local air raid warden of World War II with his white tin hat will have a new, more specialized fellow worker, a radiological monitor or meter man. His job will be to determine the extent of contamination by radiation in atomic attack. The meter men will probably not use the Geiger counter because it is primarily for sensitive measurements. Their basic instruments of detection will be ion chambers, which... So there's a couple of things there that are really important. First of all, trust your local government. Your local government's going to take care of you. During World War II, we had air raid marshals, people who were responsible for sounding the alarm and making sure that everybody was going to get off the streets and be safe and get into air raid shelters and that sort of thing during World War II. Well, after World War II, of course, we didn't need them anymore. And so we really repurposed them and we put them in charge and made them responsible through what was called the Department of Civil Defense. We made them responsible for nuclear preparedness, getting nuclear fallout shelters in place, you know, stockpiling provisions, having alert sirens to, to let people know that. But of course, because of the, the threat of radiation, then the air raid warden or the local civil defense person needed an assistant, and that guy was going to be the uh, radiological detector or what they called the meter man. Now, the meter men wouldn't want, you know, wouldn't want to walk around with a Geiger counter because Geiger counters are for really, really precise measurements of radiation. And now the, 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 video, the, the film even gives away the idea that meter men can't use Geiger counters because they're only for sensitive measurements. And if we get an atomic attack, then ultimately there's going to be lots and lots and lots of radiation floating around. So they have to use an ion chamber. And an ion chamber is used when there's lots and lots of radiation around. So that's kind of a slip, right? They're letting people know that, by the way, there's going to be a ton of radiation around if we do get attacked. So I'm not sure how that was supposed to make people feel better, but let's keep going. They measure larger amounts of radiation. In addition, the community civil defense unit will set up attack warning devices. Suitable shelter in case of emergency. Emergency. Look at that cutting edge telephone technology of 1950. That's an old telephone switchboard. So to connect your phone with somebody else's phone, the person who was operating that device actually had to pull a wire and put it into one terminal and then put the other end into another terminal and that actually connected your telephones together. So that's the height of technology back in, in 1950. And again, these were really important jobs because that's our entire communication structure in the whole United States. Like if there's an emergency, it's gonna take that person operating that switchboard to keep flipping flipping and flopping those those cords around from one one terminal connection to another. So that's it, it's funny to look at it now considering all this is, you know, hugely digitized. But but that was it. I mean, that's that's your civil defense right there. Communication centers. Adequate firefighting equipment. Hospital and I really love the UPS blood mobile that we've got here. Like if that doesn't look exactly like a UPS truck, I don't know what does. It's almost like this is a time traveler thing in this film, but pretty awesome UPS blood mobile. 
these facilities. Every person has heard some of the rumors and old wives' tales of this atomic era. Who's been giving you this information? Well, the boys down the plant... You know there's a limit to what this A-bomb can do. You asked me if a flash from an atomic bomb could blind not. If you look directly at the burst in bright daylight, at night it might last for an hour or two. But in either case, it would only be temporary. So being blinded by the atomic bomb, it's only going to be temporary. It might last for a couple of hours if you get, you know, if you if you see the flash at night. It might only last for a couple of hours, we think and we hope, but we're not entirely sure that that's true. Uh, also, of course, he said, you know, we're trying to get rid of all these old wives' tales. First of all, this is 1950. The very first atomic bomb ever to go off was 1945. How old are these old wives' tales, right? They're trying to dispel rumors, and the guy says, well, some of the boys down at the plant, some of the boys down at the factory, they've been talking about what this atomic bomb will do, and one of the things is, well, it'll make everybody go blind, and so the air raid marshal says, no, nah, it won't make you go blind. It'll, it'll just last for a little while, we think, we, we, we hope. Now, as for the radiation of the bomb, the chances that it will change your ability to have children or that it will affect any future children you might have are less than one in a million. Now, first of all, this was a really big concern, right? Radiation, and will that change my ability to have children, and will my children be born with horrible, awful birth defects, and will it continue to impact people generations down the road? Now, the funny part about this, though, is, A, that's a legitimate concern, right? People were really freaked out by that, but when you look at who the audience is here, like, these are all a bunch of old guys. Like, why are they worried about having kids when they're a bunch of old guys? Like, it's just, it's a very funny thing to me. Radiation will not make yeah. a place uninhabitable forever, possibly temporarily. No, the atom bomb will not blow up the world. Then what will it do? The three ways in which an atom bomb does its work are no mystery. The first is flash or fire. So you can see there that when this little firecracker that they're going to set off to simulate a, a bomb going off, the first effect of any atomic of any explosive is called flash, and that's when you get that fire. That's when the the, the it's burning up its fuel. It's generating a lot of heat. It creates a huge amount. It scorches things. That's the flash. Atomic bombs do that, but all bombs do that as well. The second effect is blast. These first blast. You can see that happen there. Where popped out and away and of course that's a pressure wave right it's compressing air it's throwing that 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 pressure wave through the air and it's really just obliterating and destroying things that's what knocks down most of the buildings when it comes to what they're going to start to address now. The effects of the A-bomb are, therefore, but a tremendously magnified version of any simple explosive. It is the A-bomb's third effect that is entirely new to explosives, radiation or radioactivity. So what we saw there was the meter man going through a place that's apparently been atomic bombed. Um, is that what we saw in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, right? If you, look at, if you think about where he was walking through... does not look like where that meter man was just going through, right? The meter man's going through a room that's got like minor disarray. Like the curtains are off, the chair's out of whack, things are disorganized. That, that is not what we saw in Hiroshima. So when that's what they're showing people, right? Again, that's what makes this propaganda. Let's, let's make people calm down and relax. But the things we're showing them are maybe not so legit either. But this radiation can be stopped. For example, six feet of earth, three feet of concrete, or a foot of steel, all provide sufficient protection against radioactivity. So that's a weird one too. Don't worry so much about the radiation because you can stop it, which is true, and that's fair. You can stop radiation, but then look at what they show you it takes to stop the gamma ray bursts that come out of an atomic bomb. You gotta have six feet of earth, or three feet of concrete, or a foot of steel. So I guess you're supposed to carry that around with you all the time because if you don't have those things, the gamma rays are going to irradiate you and they're probably going to kill you. So 
the fact that that's what they're telling people, and, and also, like, when are you going to have that stuff available? Three feet of concrete, a foot of steel, six feet of earth? Like, are we all supposed to become hobbits and move underground? Because, the, yeah, that'll stop the radiation from an atomic bomb, but that's also kind of a tall order to take. Very close to the center of explosion. Fire, blast, and radiation. These are the three effects of an atomic explosion which endanger man. You are given warning. If there is a designated shelter or a reinforced concrete building available, go to it without delay. So go to an air raid shelter, go to a reinforced concrete building. I love how when the air raid sirens go off and people think they're about to get attacked, they were all very, very calm, right? They're all like, oh, it's gonna be okay. Let's take our time hunting and go into the air raid shelter over here. But even at home, you can effectively defend yourself. Elsie, where are you? I'm closing off the upstairs. Good. Get down from there as soon as you can. Close all the windows, draw the blinds, and pull the drapes in front of them. Close the windows, draw the blinds, pull the drapes in front of them. Why? Why do you care about drapes? Why do you care about curtains? Why do you care about windows? Because, again, by closing blinds and stuff. Like, I, I just really, I don't get it. Right, that's not, we, we don't see Hiroshima with, with, with blinds and, and curtains and closed windows. Like, it just, it doesn't make any sense. But that's what they're telling people to do. If you go to all the trouble of closing the blinds and windows, then you, you're safe, we guess, we think, we hope, right? Again, I keep coming back to this image of, of Hiroshima because this is the reality, and then there's what they're telling people. That'll keep our fire sparks and glass splinters if the windows break. Close all the doors behind you, too. Got to make this place practically airtight. They stop in the doorway. He pats her on the shoulder and they just gaze longingly into each other's eyes. Like, it's okay, honey. We're about to be atom bombed. Like, it, it, then, really? Check everything here that might cause fire. Again, we're drawing the blinds. Like, what are the blinds supposed to do? You're after. The light colors reflect the heat and protect you from flash burns. It's better to wear coveralls because they're loose. And I can take them off and leave them outside in case they become contaminated. The heavier the cloth, the better the insulation. Elsie, you'd better pull the drapes on the windows back there. Joe, turn on the radio. These little cotton drapes on the basement window. Like that that's what Hiroshima had, right? If only the if, if only the Japanese would have known. If only the Meiji Restoration would have gotten them to have blinds on their windows. What about Mrs. Caddy and the aircraft spotted? Did you have to see outside in there? Be. <laughs> the daughter here, I think, was definitely trying to get herself a, a, a Hollywood gig because uh, she's, she's just a super over actor. Like, what about the lady that works with the air raid? Well, She's got to be outside. Is she going to be okay? If a plane's all right, and for people like her who have to stay outdoors in an emergency, heavy, loose-fitting, all-white clothing is the best protection. Heavy, loose-fitting, all-white clothing is the best protection if you got to be outside. Again, people in Hiroshima must not have just had, you know, heavy white cloth uh, to, available to them when they got nuked because that's what the government's telling people. Heavy, loose, all-white, you know, overalls. Overalls will take care of it. Follow instructions. Very little time left. Dad says there's very little time left. We're getting ready for an atomic bomb to go off, and Dad says there's very little time left. If my dad said that to me, I would not be relaxed. I would not be calm. Like, holy crap, there's very little time left. Since radiation travels in straight lines, I'd say the way I fix this corner of the basement gives us plenty of wall and earth and material between us and the possible military objectives. 
the possible military objective, do your dads talk like that? My dad doesn't talk like that, right? There's plenty of earth and wall between us and the possible military objective. Like, I know this is supposed to be making people feel better, but I really don't know if it does. Well protected from the window, too. Yes, sir. Even if a bomb blew the house over, we'd have a pretty good chance here in the basement. Even if a bomb blew the house over, we would have a pretty good chance. Like, this is not reassuring, Dad. You need to dial it back some. The walls can never be too thick. Now, children, I, I want you to sit down here against the wall. That's it. Now, crouch tight up against it. Now, listen, kids. If they're dropping an atomic bomb, it may go off any second now. If they're dropping an atomic bomb, it might go off any second. Like, is he trying to completely and totally break his children's minds in pieces here? Like, that is not comforting. That is not reassuring that they're about to drop an atomic bomb. Like, and, oh my gosh, it could go off any second. Like, God, Dad, you need to take a breath and take a break and leave us, like, to relax and chill here in the basement if we're that safe. Never happens. I'll give the signal when it's all right for us to get up. If there's an explosion, we'll wait about a minute after it's all over. Then we'll go upstairs and take a look around. So if there's an explosion, wait for me to give the all clear, right? If a bomb goes off, we're going to wait about a minute until it's all over, and then we'll go upstairs. A minute. We're going to wait a minute. So clearly what we're not dealing with here is the problem of nuclear fallout. We're not dealing with the problem of, you know, residual radiation. It's As long as we don't get hit by the blast and the flash, we're, we're going to be just fine. And we're going to go upstairs after about a minute. All right for us to clean up. This man has made good use of the time given him by warning. With calm and intelligence, he has employed the means of self-defense at his disposal. Thus, every man can greatly increase the chance of his family and himself through any attack unscathed. But this man has an advantage, a well-protected cellar. There is no basement in the neighborhood. Seek shelter on the first floor of the house. And in a room with solid walls, with as many walls as possible between you and the probable target area. Get under a sturdy object, table, desk, bed, close to the wall. If they breach should fall, the two will provide good protection. The most important thing is to keep out of line with the windows. I like how if you don't have a basement, and again, most houses that were built in the 50s, even the 40s, the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, most of them, even in cities, had basements, specifically because people were worried about having a fallout shelter. But I love how if you don't have a fallout shelter, get underneath something sturdy so that if the house collapses, it'll protect you a little bit better. But then, of course, we got to worry about, well, what happens if you're a, if you're a woman in, in a dress? You, you shouldn't lay down because that wouldn't be ladylike. Like, we're worried about being ladylike in, the, in, in an atomic bomb. Also, this... This was the cutting edge technology they were going to use. You protect your neck with your left hand, you protect your face with your right elbow, and, and that, like, did the Japanese not know about this? Like, is this what was supposed to save us? And if only the Japanese had known about right arm eyeballs, left arm neck, they'd have been okay in Hiroshima? Like, really? This is what the government's telling people. To close them off so that broken glass will not fly in. Lie down flat on your stomach. Cover your face with your right arm so that it is protected by your elbow. Grasp the back of your neck with your left hand. But wherever a substantial underground shelter is available, it provides the surest, safest possible protection against atomic attack. Yeah, that's totally what happened at Hiroshima. A little puff of smoke and then a uh, little pop and that, that it was all over. Civil Defense Bulletin. This has been an air burst. Okay, so what the Civil Defense Bulletin just said was this has been an airburst. So that was something that was really, really important to communicate to people was if an atomic bomb goes off, did it go off in the air or did it go off someplace else so that we know how to respond better? If it goes off in the air, that's actually really good because most of the radiation goes up into the upper stratosphere and then it goes someplace else. And it eventually, it eventually will fall out someplace else, but at least you know that in that immediate vicinity, you're not in immediate danger. So they do make the announcement over the radio that this has been an air burst and now we can move on and dad starts checking his watch. All persons attached to civil defense groups Report to your post immediately. Let's go, folks. Let's go, folks. It's been a minute since the atomic bomb went off, so we can go ahead and scurry on out of the basement because everything's over and everything's done with. Like, this is what the government's telling people. 
Elsie, bring the blankets. We'll find out what happened to the windows. But what about the radiation? Well, this was an air burst, honey. If the radiation didn't get to us when the atomic bomb exploded, just about all the dangerous stuff is gone. Just about all the dangerous stuff is gone. It's that just about that most people should have thought a little more carefully about. Because if it's not just about all, if it's not all of it's gone, there's still some pretty horrible stuff from that atomic bomb that's just lingering around that you probably don't want to get access to or get inside of your body. Went straight up into the air. The terrific heat makes it do that. And I don't think we're close enough to ground zero for the radiation to have even touched us. The, the the paintings, the pictures over the over the mantle have gone askew. The furniture is uh, is is disarranged. Like this is totally what we saw in Hiroshima, right? It, it looks about the same. Like they're very very closely related. So it's not such a big deal. We're we're, we're good, right? Elsie, you better check those blankets up around the windows so that we can keep the house warm. I'm going outside to see if the house has been damaged by fire. If we're all right, I'll have to check the neighborhood. But Will you be all right? If there are any fires, honey, they're just ordinary fires. We're supposed to help stop them. <laughs> Children, you better clear up the broken glass and all this debris. All in all, I'd say we've been very lucky around here. We just got nuked, but yeah, we've been very lucky around here. We just have a little bit to clean up. There's a little broken glass, and our pictures are a little, you know, hung crooked. So we're, we're lucky, really, that we got atomic bombed. Nothing to do now but wait for orders from the authorities and relax. I'd hate to have gone through this without warning. You are out in the open. Without warning, you are startled by an intense flash of light. You have seconds before the shock wave will hit you. <laughs> okay, so you're walking down the street, you see a flash, you see a burst of light, and what do you do? You run over next to the curb and you throw your right arm over your eyeballs and your left arm over your neck, because now you're going to be safe, because the government said so, right? Uh, yeah. Get behind the nearest and best shelter, a ditch, a depression of any kind, but get down, flat on the ground, flat on your stomach, with your right arm covering your face, your left hand grasping the back of your neck. If you're out in the open, die from the nearest concrete archway. The chemical supply company, does that really seem like the best place you should go? And I mean, they're saying, you know, get to the closest concrete protection, the concrete defense that you can have against the radiation. Okay, I get that. But the chemical supply company is where you're going to go for protection from the atomic bomb? The nearest and best shelter. Cover your mouth and nose with your handkerchief. It will help to keep out any possible radioactive dust. If you are blinded, it is only temporary. With the blast over, get out of the wreckage, remembering to keep as clean as possible. So here we are in an apartment building, right? This is a new kind of modern uh, concrete apartment building. So what happens if you don't have a basement? What happens if you're caught completely unaware and you live in an apartment complex where you don't have a basement? They're going to show you. So first of all, mom's in the kitchen cooking. Excellent. You're inside. Perhaps in your... Dad's sitting on his bed, which is a separate bed, in his bedroom, and he's doing the crossword puzzle, I hope, with his... Legs awkwardly crossed, sitting on a bed. This I don't really understand this this scene, but this is what Dad's doing in the middle of the afternoon. Apartment when the flash occurred. Grandma has no idea how to use a vacuum cleaner. Nobody uses a vacuum cleaner with two hands like that. Grandma's never vacuumed. This is fake. You have seconds. Move toward the nearest doorway, corridor, or a stairway, or get under a bed or table, or get behind a couch or other large, heavy object. This had to be the 50s because grandma goes right back to cleaning. She goes right back to that vacuum cleaner. We just got nuked, but grandma has to go back to the vacuum cleaner. Like, unbelievable that this is what they're showing people. Also, dad's a complete and total chicken because he dove under a bed like a goof. Alice, Alice, turn on the radio. 
Where's Buddy? I think he was out playing ball. So that's important. Where's Buddy, right? Buddy's their kid. I think he was out playing ball. He's not home. Buddy's out in the neighborhood. He's out playing ball someplace. Well, pull the drapes and seal the windows with them. He must have been caught out there in the blast. Civil Defense Bulletin. This city has just undergone a surprise atomic attack. This was an air burst. Check for fires. Further bulletins are following immediately. Shouldn't we go out and look for Buddy? No. You can hurt disaster units and take care of them. So first of all, it's an airburst. The kid's been caught outside in an atomic attack. Mom, very rightly, says, shouldn't we go outside and look for Buddy? And Dad, of course, being that he is really truly what the government wants, he says, no, we shouldn't go look for the little boy. If he's hurt, disaster units will go and find him. So in other words, our kid isn't our problem. The government will take care of it. We, we just need to stay here. We got our own stuff to do. Never mind the kid. Like, is that really legitimately what people would do? Like, parents would just be like, eh, the kid's somebody else's problem. We got work to do at home. Ooh, 1950, people. 1950. He's all right. He'll come home. <laughs> if he's all right, he'll come home. Like, if I said that to my wife about our kids, like, if, if our kids are okay, they'll come home. Yeah, no, I would be in my vehicle out looking for those children, like, right now. But that's not what the government wants. The government wants you following instructions, and the instructions are stay at home, be calm, start working to put out the fires that may have been started by this atomic bomb. And pull the water right away, Alice, and keep it covered. Won't it be radioactive? No. And, and don't take too much. Otherwise, you'll pull down the water pressure the firefighters need. Grandma doesn't know how to act either. You'll pull down the water pressure that the fire department needs. Like, oh my gosh, horrible, horrible acting. But, right, draw a pan of water. Whatever was in there was behind the walls and in the concrete, you know, in the building. So ultimately, it's not going to be radioactive, and we need some water. So pull down a pan of water. Not too much because the fire department's going to need to put out the fires. But again, horrible, horrible overacting. Go out on the fire escape and see whether any fires have been started. Mother, go downstairs and see if old Mrs. Simmons is all right. He tells his mother to go downstairs and check on old Mrs. Simmons, but he's not willing to go outside and look for his own kid because disaster units will take care of the kid, but we're supposed to go check on old Mrs. Simmons? Like, get real. I'll go, but let me know just as soon as you hear what's happened to Buddy. Oh, Buddy's here. He's home. Buddy, tell me quickly. Where were you when the bomb dropped? I was playing ball at the school of diamonds. I came home as fast as I could. I ran all the way. So Buddy was at the school baseball diamond playing with his buddies, and that's a lot closer to where the bomb went off, but he was scared because he's a kid, and an atomic bomb just went off, so he ran all the way home. Oh, you're hurt. The school's close to where the bomb exploded. Well, they get Buddy's clothes off, then take him into the bedroom and have him lie down immediately. Clean up any of the cuts or bruises and bandages. Boy, it was hot, Grandma. I never felt so hot. Buddy was much closer to the bomb than we were. Do you think he could have been exposed to prompt radiation? I'm afraid he was in the danger range. He shouldn't have exercised so much. Our kid was in the danger zone. He could have been exposed to radiation when that bomb went off. And then, stupid kid exercising so much, coming home because he was afraid and wanted to see his mom and dad. Like, really? The little boy ran home, but now we're blaming him for exercising too much. I'm, I'm afraid he may have gotten a bad dose of radiation. Mom's devastated. Dad's all like, oh, you shouldn't have exercised so much. I'm home after the blast. <laughs> Corey, we've got to get into a doctor. No, Alice, we're going to follow through, cleaning up the house, just as if we hadn't been caught unaware. Mom, not a maniac, says we should get him to a doctor because he's probably been exposed to radiation. Dad, potentially a serial killer, says no, we have to stay here and continue cleaning up the house instead of getting the kid looked at who was probably exposed to radiation. Unbelievable. And as for Buddy, the best way to help radiation sickness is to lie down and rest until you get medical attention. If Buddy has heavy nausea within two hours, it means he may have gotten a dose of radiation. I said may. So you're supposed to lie down. That's the best treatment for radiation poisoning? Um, no. Secondly, if he has heavy nausea after two hours of being atomic bombed, he may have gotten a big, a big uh, dose of radiation. And mom goes, oh my gosh, because she's like a real human being and she's thinking of the possibilities. And dad says, I just said he may have. Like, are you kidding me? These are not real people. He has sickness induced by radiation. It's necessarily fatal. 
that's when we'll get him medical attention. If he's got enough radiation, it's not necessarily fatal. Like, Dad, you're freaking me out right now, man. This is your son, and you're saying it's not necessarily fatal. We'll get him. We'll get him treatment if it might necessarily be fatal. Like, holy crap! Now we have work to do. We have work to do. do. Oh, any of the food that was out in the open during the blast has to be kept separate from the rest. Then, as soon as we're notified to use the water, wash everything: cans of food, pots and pans, the sink. But leave anything that you think might be contaminated to be tested later by the radiological crew. Wouldn't it be best to just get out of the city? No. If any evacuating can be carried on, the proper authorities will decide it. So, Mom, who's actually not a bad actress, she actually stays in character. She's doing a good job. I believe that this person knows how to behave like a mother. She goes, why don't we just get out of the city? Why don't we just leave here? Because we don't want to be around with all, you know, with all this craziness happening, being in a big city with lots and lots of other people around. But Dad, of course, being the tool of propaganda that he is, goes, no, if there's any evacuation to be carried out, the proper authorities will tell us when to do that. Oh, don't, don't be this guy. Don't be this guy. Be notified and get orders and instructions. Right now, the safest place is Alice. Cement apartment house. No front, not much blast, only a few broken windows. And chances are, buddy, will be all right. We're very lucky, Alice. We live in a new concrete apartment building, and we just got a few broken windows. And oh, by the way, chances are that Buddy will be okay, too. Like, I really don't know if this made anybody feel better in the 50s, but it shouldn't have, because this is horrifying. Dad is obviously a serial killer. And doctors can be Asian sickness considerably by using whole blood. Don't worry, darling. This man, caught unaware, by acting quickly and sensibly, has minimized the danger to himself and his family from the after-effects of an atomic air burst. While most Americans need consider only the air burst in their plans for self-defense against the A-bomb, to people living on the shores of large bodies of water, the water burst brings additional danger. So a water burst is when you set an atomic bomb off underwater, and the, the problem with that is all the heat of the atomic bomb going off actually vaporizes the water and turns it into steam, and then that steam becomes mist and fog and basically comes into the whole town and all of it's radioactive, and so it really spreads radiation much more efficiently to the, to the local town than if you have an air burst. So water bursts are actually something that was really, really, really concerning to people who live near you know, large bodies of water. In the case of an atom bomb detonated underwater, there is hardly any danger from flash. There is still danger from blast and its resulting debris, but the area of damage is small. But the severe danger is from radiation, lingering radiation. The radiation is trapped in the water, and the heat and blast cause the water to rise. Then it falls, causing mist, which emits radiation wherever it falls. Civil Defense Bulletin. This has been a water burst. Stay inside, or get inside, and wait for further instructions from your local civil defense authority. We aren't even going to budge for about an hour. So, Dad, so we're back to the basement family again, right? And, of course, Dad says, because this is a water burst, we're not going to go anywhere for about an hour. How they picked an hour, I have no idea. But, again, we're not going to go anywhere for about an hour, but let's see what we can do from the basement. After that, we may have to wait another 24 hours before we even think about going outdoors. That radioactive mist will settle on everything, contaminate everything it touches. The rule is, keep away from the moisture. And stay as far away from radioactive mist and water as you can. That's right, sir. Well, then, we'd better go upstairs and fix the living room windows. They're probably broken, and the moisture will get to us that way. The daughter in this scene, I love. She is so trying desperately to be like a real actress, and so she's going like... Like, like she's having a seizure or something. Like, she's really freaking out. It's not cool. Oh, stay put. We've taken every precaution to defend ourselves against radiation already. If we move to unprotected parts of the house now, we may get a bad dose of radiation. So we got to stay away from the moisture. Now, that is actually, again, it's very, very good advice. But something I want you guys to notice. Dad has to deal with the fact that the window broke and the, the curtain that was covering it up was also broken. And so, of course, that radiated, you know, radioactive mist can get into the basement and can poison them. So, of course, he's going to tack up a blanket, and that blanket is supposed to help to keep the moisture out. Now, look at the little teeny tiny hammer that he's using. Remember, they're in a basement, which means that should be a concrete wall. Wall, and he's going to tack up a blanket to a concrete wall using that little tiny hammer. 
Stay put for at least an hour. What if we were outside, Dad? Then we'd get inside quickly. And behind enough material that would absorb the radiation before it got to us. One little tap and that nail goes into that concrete wall to tack up that blanket. Dad must be Thor. No wonder he's not worried. Little tiny hammer, one tap. Right into a concrete wall. Oh, 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 oh. Did you see that? Something happened to him. Joe, finish packing this blanket for me, will you? Sure. And when you're finished, you'll have to wash your hands thoroughly. I got a little breeze just now. A nice cool breeze of radioactive mist. So Dad just got a nice cool breeze of radioactive mist right in the face. First of all, the daughter, this is about as good as, as an actor as she can possibly be. It's not good. But Dad got a, a little dose of radiation. Radioactive mist just came through the broken window and got into my face. Now what? Now we've been exposed to radiation. How do we handle this? Please, government propaganda film, tell me. Now, folks, watch while I give a demonstration of how to defend yourself against lingering radioactivity. First, you remove all the clothing you think might be contaminated. Then you scrub every part of you that you think might be contaminated. Once, twice, and then. You think you've got a bad dad? No, I don't think so, son. But if I have, I'm not going to have a bad very long. That's the whole idea of this scrubbing. You get a little radiation, don't let it stay with you long enough for it to build up its dirty work. Because that's one way radiation can make you sick. Two, you will stay with you long enough. It can do almost as much damage over a long period of time as one big dose all at once. So Dad's washing with water and dish soap. And that's going to make the radiation go away because of reasons, I guess. If you're radioactive right now, Daddy, does that mean that we can catch it from you? No, Meg, I've got it all to myself. Do you think we'll be <laughs> all right, Jim? Elsie, we've taken every precaution to lock that radiation out already. If it doesn't get to you right away, it starts to die. It may linger for a while, but it does die. And we can wait it out. We've got all the time in the world. This man knows that his best defense against lingering radioactivity is patience, calm patience. In a water burst, the odds are with the man who stays put. But what about the H-bomb? So by 1950, one of the big things that's changed is we've gone from atomic bombs, where you take uranium or plutonium, you split those big heavy atoms into smaller pieces, that's called fission. That releases lots and lots and lots of energy. But actually by 1950, the United States got to the point where we could develop what were called fusion bombs. And what that means is you take very small, very light elements and you fuse them together, and that also releases enormous quantities of radiation. That's called the hydrogen bomb, or the H-bomb. And... and the, the issue is that the destructive power is magnified tremendously large when it becomes a, a, a hydrogen bomb, a, a thermonuclear device, uh, a fusion bomb. And, uh, and so people were worried about that. But again, very, very, very few people even knew about it because 1950 hydrogen bombs were brand new. But they're going to tell you and they're going to make you feel okay about the fact that we do have hydrogen bombs now. A hydrogen bomb, though it might be 1,000 times more powerful than the atom bomb, would only cause damage over a radius 10 times as great. So it's a thousand times more powerful, but it only causes damage over an area that's 10 times as great. Well, if you remember the little teeny tiny atomic bomb that we dropped on Hiroshima, that fireball was 4 miles. If you multiply that by 10, the fireball is 40 miles wide. Yes, that's... Not something to be worried about. A fireball 40 miles wide? Are they serious? Are they kidding? Like, they're trying desperately to get people to relax and to calm down. And again, I don't know if this video worked or not, but it's not doing it for me. I'm totally freaked out. Damage would be similar in kind. Hence, the principles of self-defense against the H-bomb would not change from those of the A-bomb. They would become more vital. Some of the scenes you have just seen have deliberately been made slower in order to bring home to you what precon under ideal circumstances. When the alert is sounded, of course, you might not have time to do all of these things. Most important is to take cover in the basement, the center of a building, or in a doorway if you're in the street. Meanwhile, remember that civilian defense is everybody's business. All over the world today, 
powerful forces are at work for the preservation of international peace. So what they're talking about there is, of course, they're talking about the United Nations. And the United Nations was supposed to be an organization devoted to world peace. And it was supposed to be the League of Nations, except it was supposed to actually work this time, unlike the League of Nations did. So, you know, they're putting their faith in the fact that the United Nations is going to be able to ultimately make peace. The problem is that just didn't always happen. It is the hope of civilization that the harnessed power of the atom will work for the good of mankind. So that's the end of 1950's You Can Beat the A-Bomb. Uh, I hope to see you guys back here next Friday when we look at what's well, basically the elementary school version of that. It's to explain to children, A, what to do while you're at school, B, what the atomic bomb's all about, how it works, and whether you should be concerned about it or not. And uh, next Friday at 3 p.m., we're going to do it all over again, and we're going to do it with... The video from 1951, the film from 1951 called Atomic Alert. So I hope that this video was good for you. Uh, if you liked it, leave a like. Uh, share it with somebody else if you want to. Make sure you're subscribed so that you're getting notifications for when the new videos come out uh, on my channel. And uh, I'm going to keep going with this as long as I can and as long as there is interest. So thanks a lot for showing up.